In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I did all the prep work for my bathroom remodel and give you some tips to save some time on your future home improvement projects. As with most renovation projects, it's always best to start by removing everything that's in the room. So, in this case, I had to take the sink out, remove all the plumbing, the toilet, everything hanging on the walls, including a mirror, pictures, etc. So that I'd be able to move on to the rest of the project. Tip number one, when you need to cut holes in drywall, always start smaller than you think you're gonna need. It's easy to expand the hole out, but if you start small, you can see what's behind the area you're cutting in and then make a decision whether you need to go bigger or not. Smaller holes are definitely easier to patch than bigger holes. Now, another point in here is you want to remove drywall up to where a stud is typically, especially with a larger hole. That will give you a surface that you can screw into when you're mounting the piece of drywall to replace and fill that hole. It's also important to have nice straight edges on the drywall where you cut. Um, I cleaned this one after the fact, you can't really see it here, but I uh, used a straight edge and just straighten that up so when I put a new piece of drywall in, I didn't have much of a gap there. Tip number two is another drywall tip. When you have small holes like this one from where I removed the light, Use a patch. These are really convenient, super easy to use, uh, adhesive backed, they provide a nice textured surface for the mud to stick to, and really cleanly conceal the hole once the mud is sanded down and primed and painted. So one of the biggest changes to the bathroom was updating the faucet to come out of the wall instead of out of the sink. So I had to update all the plumbing to accommodate that. And that brings me to tip number three, which is when you're doing plumbing work, uh, makes it a lot easier and can save you a lot of time by dry fitting everything together first. So as you can kind of see through this progression, cut out all the pieces, put everything together dry without sweating any of the pipes so that I could make sure everything was fitting and get it all in place and then come back and follow up to sweat the pipes. Learned the hard way on previous projects by sweating each section as I went and then made it really tricky to fit the last pieces in and also if the measurement was slightly off made it a lot harder to adjust that. Tip number four is also related to plumbing. Uh, this one for PVC pipe. So whenever you're cutting PVC pipe, I'd highly recommend a pipe cutter. It gives a nice clean cut, makes it really easy. However, for larger diameter pipes like these, pipe cutters don't typically work. So to be able to cut these, uh, mark a nice clean line around the edge and then just rotate the pipe while you cut with a handsaw or a reciprocating saw. And it never hurts to test that you have the right dimensions and measurements before installing the next step of your project. Tip number five. Uh, when you're cutting holes in drywall, if you have something like pipes sticking out of the wall, or even outlets sometimes, uh, a really great way to find where they are instead of trying to measure is just to put the drywall piece in place and then push it against that object. It'll leave an indentation in the drywall, and then you can use that as a reference for cutting the hole. Now, for this wall section, um, I knew that I'd be covering it up with shiplap wall boards, so I didn't spend a lot of time making it really pretty. Typically, I would have spent more time on this if I would be painting it, but just wanted to have a clean enough wall that it'd be have something to put the boards up against. So, nobody likes a smelly bathroom. To prevent sewer gas from coming into your bathroom while you're working on your project, make sure you plug any drain holes, like a toilet or sink drain. Use things like rags to prevent a gas from coming in. Tip number seven, Always make sure you're using a texture or other type of primer that will match whatever the base wall is. So when you paint, you can't tell where you had your sanded spots. Which brings us to tip number eight. Use an easy twist to paint your walls. Uh, easy twist has a handle that, as you can kind of see as I put this roller together, um, you can suck the paint into the handle of the roller. So you don't need a pan for this. 
The paint's held in the roller and as you twist the lower section of the handle, it forces the paint into the inside of the roller and then you can continue painting the wall. As you need more paint, you just suck more paint out of the can. It's a nice, clean, easy process. The other nice benefit of this is it's got a nice long handle. So even though these walls are 10 feet tall in the bathroom, I didn't need to use a step stool or step ladder. Saved me a lot of time in this small space and made it a lot easier than having to maneuver something around to try to get it done. So here you can see that you just twist the handle and as you do so, it pushes that plunger and compresses the paint into the roller. The inside of the roller has small holes that the paint feeds through in a nice even distribution. So you get nice even painting along the walls. When you're done, you just push the paint back out. Use this handy little tool to remove any paint, excess paint from the roller. And then for latex paints, you just clean up with some water. You can get this handy attachment that you can hook to any standard garden hose and it forces water through the roller and pushes the paint out. So after several passes through, you have a nice clean roller that can be reused again on another project. And the tube can be cleaned by drawing water in multiple times and just flushing it out. Right, tip number nine. When you are doing any kind of flooring and need to put another subfloor or underlayment in, use a template. In this case, I was removing a laminate, so I was able to retain that piece of laminate to use as a template to cut for the underlayment for the tile I was putting in. Saves you a lot of time, a lot of measuring, and makes much more accurate cuts so you don't have to deal with as many potential gaps. Just like with drywall, you can cut this cement board by scoring it with a knife and then breaking it. You can also use a saw, like a reciprocating saw, to cut out any holes and makes pretty quick work. Just in general, you want to make sure your surfaces are clean before you put an underlayment down so everything lays flush. And make sure you're driving the screw heads down fully under the surface of the board. Tip number 10. Plan your layout of your tiles before you start your project. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You can cut out small pieces of paper and do a physical layout, or even use a software program such as PowerPoint in this example to figure out how you want it to look. Did some math to find a conversion of one foot equaling one inch. Uh, in this example, uh, it's just a five foot by five foot room with 12 inch tiles. I added two different layers together in this example to show what the grout would look like and then was able to create a pattern and play with that to see how I wanted it in this space. Now this isn't actually how I did it. I used a SolidWorks rendering, which we'll see in a minute because I liked that version better, but that's not accessible to everyone. So this is a great alternative. Um, pretty much anybody has access to PowerPoint and can create this kind of layout pretty easily. It's also a nice way to determine the number of tiles you need and to see if you like one pattern over another. So for example, once you have everything laid out, if you determine that you'd rather have tiles shifted up or down, or maybe even a different angle, see what they look like at a 45, that's something you can do pretty easily. And one of the things I wanted to evaluate was tile size. So I looked at two specific tile sizes, one smaller and one a little bit larger. I ended up going with a larger size, and it was really convenient to be able to count the exact number of tiles I would need. Or When you're mixing mortar, I also highly recommend using a powered drill to mix your mortar. It can be a lot of work to do this by hand, and you're going to get a very consistent result a lot faster if you do it with a power drill or other type of mixing device.
you'd like to see how I finished the bathroom project by installing a shiplap, building out the mirror, installing a sink, building the drawer under the sink, and then the light box up above, click the link in the description below and enjoy. I'd love to hear any feedback you have on this project or answer any questions you may have, so throw them in the comments below. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button with the little bell so you get notification the next time I have a video come out. Life is what you make it. Make something great.